I've, I grew up all over the world. My, my mom is English, my dad's American. I grew up in much of the developing world and have spent most of my career in intelligence and development work and journalism since then, also overseas. And what I never, what continues to surprise me in every conversation I have in each country I go to is how sophisticated people are at separating the American citizen from the American government. And I think that we do the same, I would hope, in return. Um, here in the United States, because we are lucky to live in a mature democracy, I think we sometimes forget that for many citizens, the actions of their government are nothing to do with them. They have no say in them whatsoever and are mostly horrified by what their government does. And so often overseas, people who've grown up in that kind of a government structure actually assume more than an American would, that when they meet an American citizen, that citizen is in no way responsible for the actions of the government because they've grown up in, an, in autocracies where they themselves have no say in the actions of their government. One of, one of the things that I find, I spend a lot of time in Iraq, and there's a, a, a sort of fragmentation that happens on both sides where when I bring veterans back to Iraq with my organization, Operation Zoe, which brings veterans back to war zones to use their same skills for humanitarian missions uh, that they were previously using to wage war. When I bring veterans back to the theaters that they were active in, what I find is that there's this incredible dual healing that goes on, where the veterans themselves may have spent two years in theater and never actually spent time with a local except through the reinforced glass of their Humvee. Uh, and the local townsperson may have never had any experience with that veteran that wasn't buffered you know, with an M4 and security on all sides. It's very difficult to build a human connection with that kind of security apparatus around you. When we're surrounded by weapons, our reptilian brain defaults to a, a conflict stance. Um, and when we bring veterans back unarmed to these same theaters and they work cheek by jowl with people living in the refugee camps, those who are rebuilding their homes and build a health clinic, build a youth center together with local Iraqis, it's, it's almost like watching someone wave a magic wand and seeing a curse lift and people blink for the first time and look at one another and realize that the person they're seeing is human. Uh, there's a real magic to it when you recognize yourself in someone else. And a lot of the military industrial complex is intentional, sometimes with good reason and sometimes not is intentionally designed to prevent you from having that recognition. Humans don't like to kill one another, which is great news. Uh, but basic training, not just in the United States, but in every military worldwide, is designed to walk that back, to make you believe that your adversary is something other than human in order to enable you to kill them should you need to. So I think what we have you know, 10 years into a conflict is a generation that have been subjected to that training, uh, sometimes necessarily. And now here they are needing to walk that back and rediscover the humanity in one another, and in so doing, the humanity in themselves. And when you watch that process, it's really, it's really magical. Mm -hmm.